Welcome to another lesson on Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We'll be looking at Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. But before we begin, our theme verse for Lunch with the Lord, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 1, as we saw last lesson, that in verses 1 through 10, Paul here is describing the time that he had during the Jerusalem council in Acts chapter 15. Now, in verse 1 here, Paul says, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation, and I communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now, in verse 1, Paul says, I went up again to Jerusalem and this was the same trip again that we spoke of that Paul talks about in Acts chapter 15. And he says, I took with me, uh, took with me uh, Titus. Now, the Greek word for took here means to take along as a partner or as a companion. And he says here, I took Titus with me also. And Titus now, you have to understand that Titus is an uncircumcised Greek. And Paul purposely brought Titus to this Jerusalem council because he was an uncircumcised Gentile. And Paul wanted to use Titus as living proof of the, of the defense that Paul would make that salvation is by grace and not by the law of Moses. By, by Paul taking Titus with him, we are seeing that Paul was determined in his approach here to, to his defense of the gospel of grace. Paul wanted to show the believers and the uh, leaders in Jerusalem that all of the blessings, all of the promises of God that came, that came through Christ are also for Gentiles, uncircumcised Gentiles. It's not just for uh, special people uh, of the Jews who, whatever, keep the law, but this salvation by grace and all the blessings of God has come to the, has come to the Gentiles the uncircumcised, dirty dog Gentiles. That's, <laughs> that's what Paul is saying. I'm going to show you and I'm going to use Titus as an example that God is blessing uncircumcised Gentiles too, just like he blesses us who are Jews also who come to Christ by faith. Now, in verse 2, Paul says, And I went up to Jerusalem and communicated unto to them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. He says, I went up by revelation. Now, if we look back in Acts chapter 15, verse 2, the Bible says, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, them meaning the Judaizers, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So, in Acts chapter 15, verse 2, it seems like Paul and Barnabas were sent to Jerusalem by the church. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says, I went up by revelation. So which was it? Was it the church 
that sent them, the church of Antioch that sent them, or was it a revelation of the Holy Spirit that sent them? And actually, it was both. Paul said that he went up by revelation. Uh, this also could mean that in some way, the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul and Barnabas through the believers in Antioch. And I think Paul and Barnabas realized that the Holy Spirit was moving through the believers' lives in Antioch and were speaking to them that they should go to Jerusalem and to deal with this problem, this issue that has come up that is salvation do the Gentiles have to also apply the law of Moses in order to be have the blessings and the, and the promises of God and to have a relationship with God? Or is it that or is it that no, you don't have to abide the Gentiles don't have to uh, live according to the law of Moses in order to have the promises and the blessings from God? And Paul realizes that the Holy Spirit's leading him through this through the church of Antioch to go to Jerusalem. And he says, and communicated uh, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Now, the Greek word communicated means to present. It means to lay before or to impart something. Paul and Barnabas were encouraged by the church at Antioch and by the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem and to lay out before them uh, the gospel that he was continuing to preach. Okay, And he says, them, in verse 2, them of reputation. Now, if you turn to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9, uh, Paul says here, and when James, Cephas, and John, Cephas here is Peter, James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. So here we have three men named. And because, so when Paul here says, them which were of reputation, it would seem to believe, seem to be James, Cephas and John. And but it probably isn't limited to only those three. There were probably also, who knows, there may have been other of the apostles of the Lord who were still in Jerusalem and were still there at that time. So it might not have been just those three, but actually predominantly it was those three. It was James and Peter and John that they presented this gospel to. They were the main leaders in Jerusalem that they were going to see and to deal with this issue. Now, the James here spoken of in verse 9 is not the same as the Apostle James who was Jesus' disciple. It's not the same. The, this James, the, the, the one... The, Jesus' apostle, that James, was killed by Herod in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. So the apostle James, the one who walked with Jesus, with the other apostles, that James was killed in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. The James that is spoken of here in verse 9, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, is actually Jesus' stepbrother. Okay? Jesus' stepbrother. And he says here in the last part of verse 2, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. He says, lest by any means I should run, meaning present tense, right now I should be I should be running right now, or had run, meaning all the preaching of the gospel of grace that Paul had done up until this time. And he says, so we came to Jerusalem and 
me and Barnabas and Titus, we all came and we presented this gospel of salvation by grace through faith to the Gentiles apart from the law. And we presented that gospel to James and to Peter and to John and to anyone else that was in leadership in Jerusalem. And we presented this gospel that we were preaching to them. All right. Now, in verse 3, Paul says, But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Now, it seems like Titus was one of the people that the Judaizers were in contention with at the church in Antioch. The Judaizers tried to convince the church at Antioch that Titus and other believers needed to be circumcised in order, in, in, in accordance with the law of Moses. Okay? Now, Titus is with Paul and Barnabas to present this issue to the church in Jerusalem, whether or not Gentiles should be circumcised according to the gospel of grace. So, he's saying here in verse 3, he says, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. He's saying, even in Antioch, the Judaizers were trying to press Titus and any other Gentile believer to be circumcised, to keep this law. You've got to keep the law. For thousands of years, Moses gave us, gave the, the, the Jews this law, and now you come to Jesus, and that's nice, that's fine, but you also need to be circumcised. And, not, and after circumcision, you start needed to keep this holy day and that holy day. And you gotta, you got to do this and you got to do that all according to the law of Moses. Oh, and also, uh, by the way, yeah, you can still keep believing in Jesus and trusting in him. <laughs> and it was confusing. And Paul brings Titus with him to, to Jerusalem to present this issue to Peter and James and John and the other leaders in Jerusalem to deal with this issue that, hey, we have living proof that God is blessing the Gentile believers apart from the law, apart from the law of Moses. And, and that's, that's what's being talked about here. All right, until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.